Hey y'all, I'm Tim and welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. Today we're bringing you one of our Gardening 101 videos. We hope these videos really help you understand how to grow Japanese maples. Hey, I'm Matt. Today we're going to be talking about care for Japanese maples in containers. Now this is an often requested topic that is really simple and easy to cover, but there are a lot of aspects to it. So we want to go through some of those aspects for you and give you more confidence in gardening with Japanese maples. So. If you don't already know, we put out a daily show here on the Mr. Maple Show. So some people, this may be their first video. I always like to let you know, like, subscribe, and share. You're gonna get a ton of great content here on Japanese maples and more. We do a ton of different things here from walkthroughs to demonstrations to weekly new plants, as well as our, our podcast we're involved in now. So definitely like, subscribe, and share this channel. We greatly appreciate it growing. Hey, thank you all for watching today's video. We've got a really cool topic that care for Japanese maples in containers. Now, Japanese maples are excellent for containers. They have a shallow, non-invasive root system that make them ideal for a container culture. That's why often people use them for bonsai. Now, we won't talk specifically about bonsai today, but caring for Japanese maples in containers is something that many of y'all do. If you've got a Japanese maple garden and you love Japanese maples, you start collecting Japanese maples, you often end up with a plethora of containers all around your garden full of Japanese maples. Hey, a plethora, that means a lot. <laughs> Japanese maples work great in containers, but I always like to let people know Japanese maples are gonna work in containers zones six through nine year round outside. Zone five, you are gonna take a few more steps because those containers are typically gonna need a little bit more protection. Typically being in a container, as a rule of thumb, takes it down one hardiness zone for the roots. So the care can be a little bit more tricky in that zone five. You are gonna to need to bring zone five plants either in, we actually have them in a cold frame. We're here in Western North Carolina in zone six, but you're gonna to need to bring those into a sheltered protected area that has some water provided to it over the winter months. So it's not staying too dry, but it's also not out in the full climate with those roots exposed to a zone five winter. With winter coming up, that's an excellent point to start with because a lot of people wanna leave their Japanese maple outside. They'll bring it in close next to their house and with a cover over top of it where it doesn't get any natural water and then all of a sudden they've got some issues. So you wanna make sure you get some natural water or you're gonna to have to be watering it slightly and then letting it dry out during the winter. Now, when you start off with a container Japanese maple, we start off with the pot. The container itself is really, really important. If it doesn't have any holes in it, that plant is gonna to hold tons and tons of water and you're gonna kill your Japanese maple really quickly. If you've watched any of our videos here, you know we really, really, really stress drainage. So that is paramount and the very first thing to consider when growing a Japanese maple in a container is that it has excellent drainage. If you have poor drainage, don't put the Japanese maple in the pot, it's gonna die. They need excellent drainage. They also don't want the saucer of death. You know, it's not a flying saucer, it's a saucer below the container, but that is the saucer of death. I'll have more people than not send me a picture and they'll say, I'm not sure what's going on with my Japanese maple, something's not quite right, and we'll check it out, and they'll say, here's a picture of the container, and then I'll say, hey, send me a picture of the bottom of the container, and it's sitting in a saucer, and that saucer's holding water. The tree, they, the pot they actually put the tree in has good drainage, but that saucer, you know, water holds all the way up, so just because that water's in that saucer down to this level, it maintains that water level high into the plant. So you're getting a low evaporation rate, and you're actually creating a soggy, root system that can lead to phytophthora and root rot in your plant. So making sure your tree has good drainage, you know, get rid of the saucer of death. That's one of the things we always stress here at Mr. Maple. Japanese maples never want to have continually wet feet. So we often have people, they say, I've got this really nice decorative pot. And when we look at that pot, there's no hole in it at all. And you don't have a decorative pot, you have a decorative bowl. <laughs> so you can put some fruit on this, put, put that on your kitchen table. We can make a whole video. This is the definition between a pot and a bowl. <laughs> you need, at least, that, you need at least one hole in there so the water can run out. Now, ideally for a Japanese maple that's in a container, you're gonna want multiple holes. So something that you can drill holes in, that's fantastic because you can add more drainage. And that drainage goes all the way down through the soil, through the pot, down to the ground so it can actually drain out. If you have that sitting on a deck somewhere without any pot feet on it or anything underneath it that will raise it up, mm -hmm. it will get suctioned to that deck and sometimes you can kill the plant from that drainage not going all the way through. Now, if you've only got one hole in your pot, minimum is one hole. If you've only got one hole in your pot, you're gonna to need to put some gravel on the very bottom of that pot because that will help increase the drainage so it can actually drain all the way through that gravel on, on, all the way across that pot and go through that one hole. So keep that in mind, drainage is paramount. 
Hey, my mom loves to grow Japanese maples in containers. So here's a few tips from Mama Maple. Uh, she often will find paint stirs in a home department store. That's a cheap way to add plant feet to a container that may be on a concrete patio. We have a concrete patio on one of her houses and it has an ability to suction down to that because a really nice container, even in those winter months, can have very little airflow between there. And she doesn't want something raised up super high. So paint stirs are a great way to increase that drainage out the bottom of the pot. Drainage is something you're always gonna to wanna to check in Japanese maples. She has several Japanese maples in her garden in mulch. And if you walked up to those trees, they would actually appear that the mulch was around the base of the plant. But what she's actually done is dug a little bit around the container, put bricks down there, and then sat the pot on top of the bricks. So you have a full drainage going on below what you're seeing there in the container. And taking every aspect of that into accountability, you know, make sure you have premium, premium drainage, not only in your container, but what's happening below the container. Now, that being said, ever so many years, you're gonna to need to check your Japanese maple in your pot to make sure that your roots haven't grown into those drain holes because the Japanese maple can obstruct itself from draining properly. So every three years, you're gonna to need to take the plant out. We typically recommend doing this in February to March timeframe. We're here in Western North Carolina, so that's a time when they're very forgiving you can bare root a Japanese maple with much more success than when it's in leaf. So during that time frame, you wanna take the tree out of the container and just make sure the root ball is still right for the size container you have it in. And make sure that the roots haven't grown actually into your drain holes and obstructed your drain holes. Now, one thing that Matt mentioned too, that time frame he mentioned, like he mentioned is when it's out of leaf. And that's just something I wanna reiterate. For many of y'all that may be in Texas, you know, that could be a much earlier time frame. That could be December for you. Mm -hmm. That could be your time that you want to repot your Japanese maples, trim the roots. You can either put it into a bigger pot, trim the roots, or you can actually put that into uh, the ground itself during that time of the season. Now, Japanese maples, when you want, you're selecting your Japanese maple for your container, that's really your next step after the container often. And you want to select a Japanese maple. You, any Japanese maple can do well in a container, but if you deal with a dwarf Japanese maple, you're going to have much, it's going to make it much easier. It's going to be much easier for you because the plant isn't going to be growing as vigorously. The plant is going to stay in your container for longer. For instance, if you start with a dwarf Japanese maple like a Rhode Island Red, it's going to be much easier to grow in a container than something like a Bloodgood. Yeah. A Bloodgood is going to be a faster growing Japanese maple. It's going to tip over a little bit easier. It's going to require a little bit bigger container. Right. And it's going to require a lot more care on fertilizing, on root pruning. Mm -hmm. And it can be done. It's, we have plenty of customers that do that but it requires a lot more care than a cultivar that has a similar characteristic right. that fits in that container already. If you have a small house, it may be better to go with a Chihuahua than a Great Dane. So consider these things when picking an appropriate cultivar if you're gonna to wanna to keep it in a smaller container long term. Now, I often have people at garden shows and they'll come up and they'll say, how long can I leave this in a pot? And I'm standing next to a tree that's 20 plus years old. I'm like, this tree's never been in the ground. So it certainly can be done. We grow trees here in containers. But you're gonna to have to take into consideration that containers may dry out faster, that containers may do differently in sunlight versus shade. Typically, we recommend growing Japanese maples in containers in more shady spots. You know, pots can heat up particularly quickly. Uh, even a Japanese maple that's doing very well in a container may surprise you. People often get surprised with how quickly a tree dries out that third year in the container late in the summer. And so often what happens is I'll get a picture and somebody will say, hey, my tree's looking a little burned up. It's looking a little crunchy. I think it got burned up in the sun. And what's actually happened is that tree's used up a lot of that soil that's in that container. So it's drying out faster because more of that container now is root than soil. So the pot's naturally holding less water. And what's happening is, you know, they're not watering for one week and that tree has taken up that moisture much, much quicker than it may have during other times of year. So it may need to go to a bigger container at that point or be root pruned that following uh, February to March to maintain it into a smaller container. Now, things to be cautious of there too, are that if you have that tree in full sun, it may be drying out much, much faster. Typically, we put those in a heavier shade condition or to an early morning sun, late day shade condition. Even here in zone 6B, we'll put containers in late day shade just to make sure that they're at that optimal condition. And one thing to keep in mind too is that certain types of pots, like concrete pots, can actually heat up and hold heat for longer periods of time, drying out your Japanese maple much faster. You have to remember when you have a Japanese maple in a container versus being in the ground, you have to take care of that plant and water it and make sure that that plant is getting an accurate amount of water because it can't take care of itself in that container. You basically have a plant 
that you're carrying on and loving and appreciating up close. I mean, that's one of the great things about containers is you can extend your, your garden to your driveway, your patio, your pool, and really bring it up to your porch so you're sitting down there in your rocking chair and you can really sit there and enjoy your Japanese maple garden even right up next to or close to your home. Yeah, I've seen collectors who have 300 plus Japanese maples in their garden all in containers. One of the beauties of Japanese maples is that there's so many smaller overall cultivars that are easy to maintain in that containerized garden. As especially, you know, I, I joke about this often, but with Japanese maple collectors, you can't have just one. And so oftentimes this collection will grow. And as it grows, so does the container garden. And by that, you know, you want to make sure you maintain some of these steps to give you the optimal balance so that your Japanese maple will have the easiest life. Now, sometimes I tell people, I have people send me pictures of their Japanese maple in a container and they're struggling to maintain some of these proper balances. And I let them know up front, I think you should plant your tree in the ground because you know the conditions you have for this aren't optimal for a containerized Japanese maple. You're getting too much sun, you're drying out too quickly. Some of these things aren't going quick, you know, right for you. And if you'll simply plant this plant in the ground, a lot of the things you're struggling with are gonna maintain themselves naturally and so it's going to be a little bit easier for you in the ground versus a container but japanese maples do work excellent containers now another factor to be conscious of are not planting plants in your japanese maple container that may require more water than the japanese maple so some annuals you know certain types of plants that may require a lot more water intake than a japanese maple are not going to be ideal companion plants to plant in your japanese maple containers we actually plant sedums things with low non-invasive root systems that can also maintain you know, health in a similar situation. Succulents and sedums and things like that tend to be excellent accompaniment plants because that root system isn't gonna be something that's invasive for the Japanese maple. It's not gonna give it a lot of competition, but they're also not gonna require you know, a large amount of water that the Japanese maple may struggle with. Yeah, that, that's a great point, Matt. I think people often will start watering the plant and see that plant drying out, water the plant, and it's just getting too much and too much on that Japanese maple. You know, watering in containers is something that you really have to be careful about. You got to give it a good amount of water, but that drainage is paramount. And if you have a good amount of water and good drainage, containers mm -hmm. is a, a great way to do it. You've got to remember containers, growing a Japanese maple container is, an, is one of the easiest uh, plants to mm -hmm. grow in a container is a Japanese maple. Right. I mean, Japanese maples are designed for containers. Now that being said, it does require more care than in the ground. So if you're starting to have issues with growing Japanese maples in containers, you know, you may have a very busy work life and not be able to take as much care of that tree in a container. It may be best just to go plant that tree in the ground and let that plant thrive and do well. And you can enjoy it because the Japanese maples are so carefree out in the landscape. But Japanese maples in containers is something that if you love Japanese maples and you've got tons and tons and tons, everybody starts doing because there's, so many great dwarf Japanese maples and so many great Japanese maples you can really mm. enjoy up close near your home. Now something to be conscious of with Japanese maples in the container is that you control every <coughs> aspect of that environment. You have these Japanese maples in a small enclosed area so you are responsible for the nutrients for this plant, the water for this plant, where it's not going to obtain those things naturally. Now we have over 300 trees planted in my parents garden we do very low maintenance on that. We just did a video on maintenance for Japanese maples. And there's very, very little maintenance for Japanese maples in the ground. It's very simple to grow. But in the container, you're gonna to have to follow these steps. And it can be a little different for each environment. Some people say, well, what's the optimal amount of water I should water my Japanese maple with? That's gonna be very, very different for Texas and Oregon. So there's gonna be you know, very different conditions there. So it's gonna be a, a balance you're gonna to have to learn and maintain with this Japanese maple. The, the honest answer is you want good drainage and you want to test it to make sure it's completely dried out before watering again. Now, things to be conscious of in the container, definitely that root ball, but also, you know, some nutrients. After a few years, you're going to want to be replacing that soil, you know, adding it to a bigger container or root pruning it and putting some new soil with some good micronutrients back in there. Now, one thing to think about too with Japanese maples and containers is we've got a whole video on this to talk a little bit about what size you should pot one up to. You don't want to start out with a huge container for a small Japanese maple. Mm. Often that Japanese maple won't grow very well. You'll have a issue where the plant starts holding a lot of water in that pot or that pot is just draining out too quickly because you've got tons of soil on the outside and just the small little plant on the inside. So keep in mind that a huge container is very different from growing a tree in the ground. Mm. And if you have a tree in a huge container, that plant isn't gonna put out the amount of top growth 
and it's gonna take a long time to really get going if you put a plant, a small plant, in too large of a container. It's very best to step it up. So mm -hmm. start off with a little bit bigger and then a little bit bigger. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Yeah, you will find that keeping a very tight root ball in a Japanese maple that's very old in a smaller container will dwarf them long term. You're gonna naturally bonsai out of that tree by having a smaller root ball and your tree's not gonna reach its optimal size that it would in the ground. So it's gonna be a little slower growing in the container typically uh, at a medium age, not at a young age, but at a medium age than it is gonna be in the ground. So that's something to be conscious of. Often I recommend little to no fertilizer in the container. Even though you wanna maintain that micronutrient balance, you don't want to push your tree because a lot of times what people are doing are they want the small you know, patio planter and that's where they wanna enjoy that tree. So you know, remember that you need to be conscious of the growth rate. You're not trying to push this tree to get large if your goal is to maintain a tree that you can keep on your porch. And that's why something like micro, using some Micromax that has 32, Micromax, uh, 32 different nutrients in there, using that every once in a while as a container is better than just going and throwing 10, 10, 10 right. on a container. Because if you just start getting that plant to start getting very vigorous, mm. that's the exact opposite of what you're wanting for a container. Yeah. You're wanting a slow growing plant in a container. And that's sort of what happens when you grow a Japanese maple in a container because they grow to the size bowl you put them in. And if you put them in a very mm. uh, large bowl, a large Japanese maple, it's going to get much larger. If you put it in a really, really small tight container, it's not going to grow too much. It's also easy to build up too much residual nitrogen in that container. Uh, you know, kelp is great. We talk about kelp sometimes, but it's easy to build up too much salt by over kelping your Japanese maples. You can have an abundance of salt because naturally some of that's going to be more displaced in the ground than it is in a containerized yeah. garden. So be conscious of these things you're adding. There can be buildup over time, especially with nitrogen spikes. And, you know, check your Japanese maple frequently. It's one of those things that sounds too simple, but it's like, hey, are you a good cook? Yeah, you followed all the steps. Well, are you a good Japanese maple grower? Really all it takes is some attention to detail there. So you kind of watch your trees, see what's going on. I know it's easy to get distracted and then come back and say, oh no, what's, what's changed about this tree? But if you can follow it, you know, and watch this thing frequently, just check in on it once a week and go, my tree's looking pretty good. Let's see what's happening here. And you're gonna be able to get ahead of things that could be going wrong and perform these maintenance steps to better ensure that your Japanese maple in a container is the optimum looking plant. Now, if you follow these steps, your Japanese maple is gonna look very beautiful in your container. And it's gonna just, just show all those great things you love about Japanese maples from the spring, summer, fall color, those amazing shapes Japanese maples get. And as the tree matures, it's gonna look like a little bonsai right there in the container. And that's one of the things we love about Japanese maples is that beauty, their ability to grow in containers is paramount. That shallow non-invasive root system is one of the best things about them. And if you follow these steps, your Japanese maple is gonna look pretty awesome. Hey guys, like, subscribe, share, all those good things. One of the best things you can do to help this channel is shop on mrmaple.com. So you can go to our website, you can filter down by dwarfs, you can filter down by trees for containers, and you can see some excellent uh, suggestions we make for Japanese maples for that containerized garden. We hope you've enjoyed today's content. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want more information on when to water your Japanese maple, check out our video, When Should I Water My Japanese Maple? We've got a whole video on watering Japanese maples and how much you should water Japanese maples. We have also one for pruning and one for fertilizing. So if you like all these different types of content on how to care for your Japanese maple, make sure you subscribe to the Mr. Maple Show. We put out lots of videos trying to do our best to help you care for your garden and help your Japanese maples thrive and look extra beautiful. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.